Hey everybody, it's Eric Green. Thank you for um, checking out this week's podcast. What I want to do is just very quickly cover some of the 2019 IRS collection updates. Now I'm going to be presenting next week, uh, in two weeks actually, at the AICPA National Conference. Then I'm going to be at Scaling New Heights in Salt Lake City, where I'm going to be talking about a lot of this. So I thought I would let our members kind of get a, a preview of some of the things that you really should know about if you're if you're representing taxpayers. So, first thing I want to just mention to you is, is older vehicles. Now, many of you who have listened to me on offers and compromise, and if you've gone through the training, you know that if you have an older vehicle, there's additional expenses that you're allowed. Right? There's an additional two hundred dollars a month for older vehicles. Well, they've changed the criteria on that. So I want to cover that quickly. I do want to update you. The new data book is out by the IRS. They've they've released the 2018, uh, all the statistics. I want to just review some of the highlights of that uh, quickly. Uh, one of them is actually a little surprising to me. And then finally, just update you on the passport revocations and, and, um, and the collections that are coming in uh, from that. So again, let's get back to the older vehicle. So if you have an older vehicle, the IRS for an offer and it's only for offers. And the reason for that is because with an offer, we're looking at future income, right? They're trying to calculate your future income. And if you have an older vehicle, the IRS came to the conclusion that, you know, there's just more repairs and maintenance on older vehicles. So they should allow this additional $200 a month. Um, if you if you have a vehicle that qualifies as a quote unquote older vehicle, well, what was that? Up until a little while ago, it was a vehicle that was more than six years old, or had more than seventy thousand miles. That has now been updated. It is now eight years old and a hundred thousand miles. So if you have a taxpayer like here in, in Connecticut, you're entitled to two hundred and thirty dollars a month for operating a vehicle. That's this, that's the IRS standard. Well. Now, if you have an older vehicle, meaning it's more than eight years old or more than 100,000 miles, I would not get just the $230. I would get an additional $200 a month expense when I file the offer or $430 a month. All right. And I gave you the site for that uh, if you're watching this uh, in YouTube. But if not, uh, the site is Internal Revenue Manual 5.8.5.22. Point three, so five eight five twenty two three, all right, and um, that it, just in case you ever have an issue with the IRS, you know where to go and, and find it. And and as like I always tell people, I've given you the site. Well, every now and then the IRS tends to update the manual, and they don't always let us know when they've done it. So if you go to five eight five twenty two point three and it's not there, look around for it. It may have moved one or two places up or down in the numbering because as they adjust other sections, you know, the, the, everything gets renumbered, all right? So, you know, before everyone panics, always when you're looking at it for an internal revenue manual site that I give you, if it's in my book or it's on one of the podcasts, go to that site. If you don't see it there, look around in that area and it, you, I'm, sh- I'm certain you'll find it. All right, now the new data book was released. And if you're not familiar with the data book, the IRS does put out a data book every year and it has all the data you could ever wanna know about the IRS. You know, how many returns are filed by state, by income type, uh, by type, like how many partnership returns, how many corporate returns. Well, in there, in table 16 is the collection and enforcement table. Right. So every single year I've been reporting the inventory in collection, right? The number of taxpayers in collection just keeps going up. Well, for the first time in about 15 years, it actually dropped, right? It went from 14.8 million accounts in collection to 13.19. Now, what do I, what do I think accounts for this? Well, I think um, passports, which we're going to get to uh, next, but the passport revocation and the private debt collection has helped the IRS clear up a lot of the backlog. All right. A couple other things. The number of offers filed, number of offers and compromise filed with the IRS did drop slightly. Uh, but And so did the, you know, the acceptance rate dropped from 42 to 40 percent. All right. And again, why is it so low? Because most people file offers that don't know what they're doing. All right. But if you're a tax rep member, you've been through the training, you know how to file an offer that'll get accepted. All right. And finally, the number of levies is up. 
the number of levies issued by the collection division is up just so, just under 9%, right? And I think that that has a lot to do with Paul uh, Mamo and Darren Guillot, who are, you know, Darren is uh, director of field collections, Paul is director of collections, you know, nationally, really trying to get the field force to make, um, to make more with the tools that they have. Right? We're now getting more injunctions against employers that don't deposit. Right? We are more criminal cases in the payroll arena than ever before. Right? So I think you're watching uh, enforcement go up despite the staffing numbers because of the fact that the government really just needs to collect the money. All right? And the final thing I just want to update you on is, is the passport um, revocation. Now, initially, when the FAST Act came out in 2015, the IRS didn't want to start actually revoking passports because, you know, is there a due process issue? And so what they would do is they would um, certify if a taxpayer was seriously delinquent to the State Department, and the State Department would not allow them to renew their passport. But if you had your passport, you were fine, but you just weren't going to be able to renew it. Well, they are now moving to actually start revoking them. So I think you're going to watch a lot more happen in that area as they begin revoking. But so here's what's been happening: as those letters go out saying we're, you know, we're going to we're certifying you to the State Department uh, and going after your passport, the program has brought in more than 900 million dollars. People have gotten that letter and come in and actually have made seven-figure payments to the IRS. Right. So the program has actually been a huge success. Right, because people get that letter, they do not want to lose their passport, they do not want to, you know, not be able to renew. And so, um, what you're seeing, I think, is a lot of taxpayers just simply, you know, they've been sitting on the fence, seeing if the 10 years would run out, now decide that they don't want to risk losing their passport and they're coming in and dealing with it. Again, it's not quite there, but it's almost a billion dollars collected from that, right? Tremendous success. It as um, a program goes. So anyway, look, uh, I told you I'm going to be out at the a AICPA National Conference. That's the week of June 10th. The week of June 17th, I will be at Scaling New Heights in Las Vegas, uh, doing IRS representation at both of them. All right. But on Friday, June 14th, I'm going to record that podcast episode from Las Vegas, and it's going to be an AMA episode. What do I mean by AMA? Ask me anything. All right. So if you have questions about IRS representation, whether it's building your practice, whether it's a, a, an issue with a client, offers and compromise, audits, uh, criminal cases, whatever you've got, get it to us. All right. Email podcast at taxrepllc.com. Again, podcast at taxrepllc.com. I'll put it down in the description below. Email me your questions. I'm going to be answering all the questions I get on that program. Right? And I want to do more of this because I get a lot of email questions. I'm typing emails back and it just seems to me it might make more sense if we shared it because if you have this question, chances are a lot of other people have the same question. All right. So go ahead, email podcast at taxrepllc.com. If you can get it to me by June 12th, I will answer the questions on the June 14th uh, episode. It's going to be an AMA. Ask me anything. As long as it's IRS related, I, listen, you can ask me anything you want. Whether I discuss it on the podcast or not will be a different issue. But um, get that, get your questions in. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And uh, thank you for tuning in. And I will um, hopefully get your questions for the 14th. And hopefully you enjoy this episode. Go check out the other ones. And we'll see you next week.